hello and welcome to this episode of the Corporate Escapers TV show and podcast. I'm your host, Christine Innes. Now, I must admit, I don't get nervous now during interviews, but I am super nervous about interviewing this amazing woman, Katie Turner. Welcome, beautiful. Thank you. I'm very honored to be here and I, I love the name of your business. So oh, Corporate thank Escapers you. is a fabulous, fabulous name. Thank you. You are probably one of the, like, I met you the first time the other week and I'm like, get off the call. And I'm like, this woman is a powerhouse and probably one of the nicest people that I've met in a long time. So I'm excited to have you here. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited. I love connecting with people. As I said, I, I don't really have a social life. This is it. Yes. <laughs> talking to other like-minded people. So thank you for having me. No, thank you. So before I get carried away, I'm going to hand over to you, beautiful, and get you to introduce yourself to our audience. And then we're going to dive in and ask some beautiful questions. Hi, um, my name's Katie Turner. I run a couple of companies. Um, I started in corporate um, with an undergrad in economics because basically my parents told me I had to. And that was the era that it was safe. You had to go to university or you had to do a trade. And, and that was all they knew, the nine to five, the Monday to Friday, the holiday pay, the superannuation, that was wrapped up as stability. And that was how I was brought up by parents who were both um, government bureaucrats uh, and lived safely um, and owning your own business was just so far from how they were brought up as well. So it was very generational. So I did an economics degree. I worked in finance for a few years and um, to be honest, hated every second of it. So after working a couple of years as a portfolio accountant, I kind of left my job and went backpacking through Thailand and thought, you know, I, I have always been interested in running businesses, in making money that isn't a constant amount every week. And I love the thought of the harder you work, the more you can earn. So um, I came back and I am very health and fitness orientated. I played sport my whole life and you know, started as a PT 20 years ago when there was one in five women doing it. And after 12 months, opened my first personal training studio in, in Crow's Nest in Sydney, ran that and operated it for six years and left and started a, a numerous other businesses. I lectured um, for a while in fitness business, bringing my economics and, and fitness side of it. And I had a contract with the NRL, again, one of the first females to go out there and my most nervous day I think was walking into a, a group of 2200 kilo plus men um, staring down the barrel at me as like what are you doing here what are you going to teach us and before you know long I had them all engaged and excited about using their brand name to build businesses off the back of retirement at the age of 30 so I did that I currently own and operate Katie Turner Media. So I had poor experiences in uh, recruiting online service providers, you know, website designers, social media. So um, I went out and built a company that basically with strategy at the forefront, but clear communication, excellent delivery, innovative processes. And I've built a team who are amazing and will never ghost you, rip you off um, and really build that bridge between tech and business owner. So that's one of my companies. I still have a fitness business, believe it or not. Most of my trainers run that for me. We've got 110 members of a group fitness business here in Sydney. And I also have just launched Buckle Bandage, where uh, it's a, a journey over seven years. My daughter um, was burnt by a hot car seat buckle early in the piece when she was only three months old. And I, as a budding problem solver, wanted to see what was out there and there was nothing. So seven years later, we've created a product that reduces hot car seat buckle burns in kids zero to four at this stage. So we launched that in February. So yeah, there's a few things on my plate right now. And I also have a my own podcast, Switch Your Sitch, uh, where we chat to people who have changed their situation for whether it be launch a business, grow a business, um, start a new career um, or embark on a healthier lifestyle. Yeah. I said powerhouse like there's just one word that you know you should just have in the back <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so. I don't, I, uh, my mind doesn't switch off but I love everything that I do I love my day whether it's eight hours or 16 hours yeah absolutely 
Have you found that obviously being, you know, obviously transitioning from corporate to your own business, what's probably been the biggest takeaway that you've learned personally that you've had to adapt to? Uh, Structuring your day. So, I mean, there's so, so many advantages. For me, corporate was boring because I wasn't allowed to innovate fast enough. I was, you know, bound by guidelines that had been superseded by technology. Mm. Like, you know, we, we look at it, we have somebody going to university these days for four years with the most up-to-date available technology at their fingertips. And then they go into a graduate position and they sit there and do data entry. Like it's just so underutilized their skill capabilities. So, mm. but when you work for yourself, the biggest takeaway for me is work at your most, work when you're most productive. So I'm up at 4.33 a.m. every morning. I'm a morning person. And mm. you know, by two o'clock in the afternoon, I know my productivity is reduced by 50%. So really making sure I hit the, the big to-do list between that 5 a.m. and school drop-off or when the kids get up and then again from 9 till 12. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's probably what a lot of entrepreneurs, especially if they've come from corporate, really struggle to adapt to because you no longer have meeting at this time or, you know, you have lunch at this time. It's now actually finding you as well and what works the best. And off the back of that, you've got to understand, I know it's said to death, your strengths and weaknesses because you can't wear every hat like I have three businesses but behind me in each business is an amazing team and you know I have the best VA in the world uh she's very patient with me when my ideas flip and I send her to do lists um but yeah building out systems to a degree I'm not a big you know systems to make work processes simpler and consistent but still allowing a lot of you know innovation and thought processes and you know human spirit into the today into today's job or work environment yeah and talking about that like my word is authentic and I feel that I constantly talk about when you go into business for yourself you have to be authentic did you find like you becoming more of you having to have your own business opposed to being I guess put in a box or you know a label in corporate yeah great question I think it takes a while to get rid of that label connotation when you step out of corporate because you're very much bound by what you do rather than who you are so I think it it does take a while you also Mm -hmm. have to like build confidence you know that imposter syndrome takes over a lot and even 20 years later sometimes I have that doubt in the back of my head you know of am I really can I really do this or you know I just did a podcast with one of my idols Ronnie Khan from Oz Harvest and you know she is an absolute inspiration and when she said yes I was like pinching why why would you do a podcast with little old me sort of thing so I think removing the labels it does take a while to understand who you are and what you have to offer and that's a a big learning process yeah absolutely I really have found and you know a lot of it come from my personal journey and then just obviously talking to other entrepreneurs is the fact that it's leaving the corporate mentality behind so you know you have their mission their values that you follow but it's now actually establishing that for yourself personally and then also for your business as well. Do you agree with that? A hundred percent. And I'm very human centric. Like for me, you know, whatever businesses I am in, I'm in the business of people, number one. And then I apply baby safety products, you know, media, fitness, but my number one core product delivery or service delivery is people. So Mm. that is always core to my whatever business I do do launch or find yeah yeah absolutely what has been sort of one of the biggest achievements that you've had in your business so far that you still think of oh my goodness like I call them the pinch me moments going I can't believe this is happening or this happened 
Yeah, definitely that Ronnie Carr moment, Kate yeah. moment, when she said yes. I mean, I've had Neil Perry. I've had some amazing people on on my podcast. I think in every business, like even for Buckle Bandage, from an idea to creation to launch, like that was a seven year process because obviously you're delivering a product. A, child safety product there's so much compliance and legislation that you have to mm. stick to you have to have a price point that you have to stick to because you're talking about new parents you're talking about the environment that's a number another core pillar for us is you know it has to be environmentally mm. conscious so the materials that we use even to the injection molds we use is from recycled shampoo and conditioner bottles so everything to come together and then to see actually like become a, a product and something that people use. We were picked up by Seven News, by Kidspot, by The Sun in the UK. You know, we had so much free PR associated with it that it was actually a pinch me, this is actually going to work. <laughs> We've actually launched this. And, yeah, I couldn't have been proud of that moment, especially of my team. Like my team are, yeah. have been amazing. Yeah, yeah. And is there, as you know, you talked about the imposter syndrome and I'm really glad that you said that it still happens because I think a lot of people, they, especially when you're in social media, you know, they see what they want to see, but they don't see the hard work that goes behind it. And it's not just the day-to-day stuff. It is also the, the mindset that you need to have as an entrepreneur to be able to make it as well. And make it can be in any aspect as well because I think there's different levels of success for everybody as well do you is that how you feel as well that mindset is so key to business very key and I think you're right where you are in your you know life cycle of entrepreneurial life you know the very early days my measure of success was that I could buy a coffee every day without having to think about it you know that five dollars a day without having to think can I afford that that was a measure my first measure of success the next one was like bottled wine <laughs> and I'm not drinking out of a cask anymore you know I can afford to actually buy a bottle and today it's about who I network with you know I'm very selective about where I spend my time who I can help who I can give back to as well and I think that's a big measure of success um, the other thing is you have to get comfortable with rejection and it was a, you know something that I had to learn early mm. in the piece even speaking to Ronnie Khan on my recent podcast episode, she, that was something that she brought up as well. How many, she was giving away free food to mm. homeless shelters and she still sometimes got knocked back. So, you know, getting comfortable with rejection and moving on to the next with as much confidence in your product or services is, is quite difficult. And yeah, only comes, I say, you can only get better at push-ups by doing push-ups. You can only get better at rejection by being rejected more. It's not something that you can read about or theorize. No, absolutely not. I always say to people, you need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable because being in business for yourself, you are going to be uncomfortable every single day. (laughs) It's just, you know, that's gross. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely. Comfortable, and you know, if you stay where you yeah. are, you grow. If that's you, your comfort spot. Yeah, absolutely. What I love, um, you know, obviously talking to you, and you know, you really have inspired me like a lot. You know, just the conversation that we had the other week, but you know, you talked a lot about you know giving back to people, and I, I feel is that sometimes we really become closed off because we're so guarded of what we've achieved or our business secrets as such or in in all of that I love collaboration over competition what are your thoughts on that definitely collaboration over competition always wins out the people you meet the idea generation the you know sounding block uh, two is always better than one in terms of mine. So I'm a big collaborator and I'm also like you've done, you know, content is king. I mm. share all my content on social media. Um, my core product, especially in the media um, area or my media business is strategy. You know, that's where my core product is. I, we've developed a business plan that people will actually use a dynamic business strategy Um but we, I offer so much free content um, on top of that through my social media channels because it is about, I've 
picked other people's brains and you know i'm not scared to to give that off it actually only helps build credibility into your work you know this free i've seen it a lot these free 15 minute discovery calls with business coaches and strategists that's a lot of time for lead gen when if you're creating great content and free content people can build trust into your product or service anyway you know i'm i give a lot away i whether it be through my podcast or through my social media channels mm -hmm. and i think that's great because it can help build trust with your audience without having to do free 15 minute discovery calls i mean because you're not going to find out in 15 minutes whether that person's right for you or not no no and i think that the biggest thing that i've I've learned um, as well, and you know, working with multiple people is, you know, you want to build lasting relationships too. And I, I feel that that is for me key. You know, I I don't want to be transactional, and I know that there's a lot of people out there like, okay, I remember when I was working in corporate, I went to one training session and she smashed a watermelon. So I always remember the, 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 the start of it. And they said how much money it actually takes for you to generate a new client opposed to you actually keeping your current clients. And I think sometimes we forget of actually nurturing our current clients opposed to always constantly looking for the new. That's right. And I think that's what the internet did early in the piece. It, you know, broke down relationships, it, you know, sales funnels. And it was always about, oh, looking for the next new client. As mm. you say, right, you're better off getting 80% of your business from 20% of your clients. Mm. Um, and looking after nurturing those relationships. Referrals aren't dead. They're just done in a different way now. So mm. I think that's another really important part is that word of mouth, even though it's, you know, not necessarily done by to the person who you go to school with, it's done online now. And that's the difference. And I think, yeah, relationships are key, whether it be with your customers, whether it be with other people. Um, and we've really had to come back to that because the single transaction, as we've seen through Facebook marketing, through, mm. you know, Google, um, paid ads on LinkedIn, it's an expensive form to generate a client and then lose them and then have to go out and find another one. So, yeah. I think relationships are key going forward and referrals aren't dead. They're just done in a different way now. Yeah, absolutely. I want to, what is sort of like, if you could think in five years, what would be one big goal for you to achieve? In five years, we want to bring out more products for the Buckle Bandage, set kids safety products um, with a kickback. Like my thing growing up was always sport and exercise um, kept me out of trouble when kids were at bars, rave parties and whatnot. You know, I just didn't have time for it. I was always playing a sport or building a community that was focused on you know, health and exercise. So we really want to start to ensure that every child has access to sporting facilities or communities. So mm. that's we're looking to give back through Buckle Bandage um, into kids' activities and sports. Um, for me, I suppose selling businesses and, and then starting new ones, like that's the ultimate goal for me is to build it, have an exit strategy. And people say that you shouldn't have an exit strategy when you start. And I, I tend to doubt that. I think, you know, you may not think about selling off from the beginning, but there will be a burnout stage. There will be a moment that you get to the point where you go, okay. Um, I've built this with my skill set and my team to a point that I can't progress any further and somebody with a better skill set and a better team can take this business elsewhere. That's where I'm at with where I think Buckle Bandage will go, where it can build greater and better things mm -hmm. with bigger community aspects than what my network can. So in five years, we see somebody taking that off our hands but with the same fundamentals and, and kickback, bigger kickbacks than we could provide. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And I'm actually really glad that you said, you know, the exit strategy because I, I would love your thoughts on when you start a business to also have your own personal branding and then have the business branding so that you can become a brand so that you can, as part of your exit strategy, sell the business but still have your own brand as well. Yeah, it's funny you should say that because 
every brand should have a story and a person behind it. And we're mm-hmm. seeing that now. People connect with people rather than brands. So it's really important that they understand who's behind it. But, you know, like my media company, it is Katie Turner Media because I'm the frontage of the strategy side of it and I have an amazing team behind me. That can be rebranded with the same business acumen behind it and mm-hmm. the same processes behind it it'll just become a conglomerate of a company should I ever sell it. Buckle Bandage is obviously not a personal branding in any way. Some people may not know that it's specifically me behind it. Um, And it was built that way for a reason. But they also know that if they know that it's my branding behind it, that it's a trusted and professional business structure. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's exactly right. You should be known as the person behind it, but perhaps execute it in a way that it can be sold out if that's how you started an organisation or a company as well. Yeah. And I love how you said that there needs to be a story behind it because you know me, like I'm all about stories. I, I believe that when you share a story, a little bit of your DNA actually gets implanted in someone and at the right time it's going to be activated. And I, everyone calls me, oh, I've never heard of that before. But it's, for me, I truly believe it. And I think stories sell and I think businesses forget that, that people want to know why you started the business, what is the passion behind it so that they can automatically connect and go, well, if you've done it and you've been through this or you've been able to achieve that, they are actually more inclined to work with you. Oh, exactly. And I think it resonates with their journey and that it's possible like yourself, you've come out of corporate, you know, uh, you went through a tumultuous time when you stepped out of that and then you've rebuilt from ground up. I did a talk at a um, a Women in Finance for IWD and um, my story behind that was, you know, really ensuring that females maintain financial independence. And I was brought up by a single mum who was left on Christmas Eve when I was five and my sister was three with no money, no access to finance, who'd put herself through university and watching that journey from very early in the piece my goal was to maintain financial independence. Um, even though you know my husband and I, we have property together, we have a daughter together, but should anything happen, um, I'd be okay. And my daughter would be okay. And mm. that's really my journey behind what I do is to ensure that, yeah, I'm, I can stand on my own two feet forever, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And I love that. And I think, from everything that I've been through, that's sort of the journey that I'm on now is to be able to do that. And I feel like, you know, as you share your story and you share, you know, parts of your business, do you still get surprised at the ripple effect that you're creating, not only just within your family, but for other people that you talk to? Yeah, I think the best thing that has come out of social media and come out of um, these kind of platforms is that, People can see that it's possible, you know, but in saying that there's always an opportunity cost or a sacrifice. So don't think it's going to be easy. And I think that's the biggest point. You know, I lived at a home and I did my university degree. I waitressed at night. I worked in a bank some days, um, building from the ground up with a personal training studio. Again, I was waitressing for $10 an hour at night and building the studio from 5 a.m. till midday during the day and waitressing from four till 10. So That's the other thing, that there is a raw journey behind it. You know, there was baked beans and canned spaghetti for a long time. There was cask wine. There was instant coffee. But that's the sacrifices that I had made to ensure that going forward in the long term, in the long term game, it's not short term anymore, that I could maintain that financial independence and continually learning as well. Yeah. Yeah, I love that so much. I I literally could talk to you all day. I really do admire everything that you've done and just your generosity as well. So I just want to say thank you so, so much for being here today and sharing your beautiful gifts with us. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate the time. I know you're very busy and you've got a huge to-do list as well. So thanks for taking the time out to share with your audience. My pleasure. I'm going to pop all the details where you can reach out to Katie. Honestly, she is, like I said, a powerhouse. And I highly recommend that if you, A, you got kids, go and check out um, her brand new product, put all the details there. And also if you are in business to go and 
book in a call with her because she really is very generous and will really inspire you. So thank you again, beautiful. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who has watched this episode. If you have liked this episode, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And if you've got any comments, make sure you pop them below and Katie and I will reach out to you. Remember to live life to the fullest every single day. Love and light to you all.